Welcome to the introduction to Video Enhance AI. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through all of the preferences and tools found within this application. Now, pretty much everything here is the same whether you're using Video Enhance AI on a Mac or Windows, so you should be able to follow along without any problems. I'm gonna be working in a clockwise direction, so we'll start with preferences at the top, then move our way along the right with all the options and tools there, and then finally to the time bar below the preview window. First, let's go ahead and view the options in the preferences window. The first setting is AI processor, and this is probably the most important setting to pay attention to because it has a huge impact on the performance of video enhanced AI. If you have CPU selected, we highly recommend selecting your GPU if your computer has one. Next, you have the max VRAM usage, and we generally advise you to select high if you have more than eight gigabytes of RAM, but you can select medium if you wanna balance applications that are using your GPU. If you find that Video Enhance AI is performing sluggishly on your computer, we recommend enabling the reduce machine load option. Next, you can specify whether you want the output video to be saved at the same folder location as the source video, or if you click on custom, you can choose which folder to save your video file. Under customization, you can select what the color of your preview background is and whether you want the playback toolbar to be below or above the preview window. And by default, it's on the bottom. Next, you can choose to enable or disable model tooltips, and I'll show you what that means in a minute. And then finally, we have a beta option for showing the time codes. If you enable that, instead of showing the frame number, it'll actually show you the time code for your video clip. And I'll go ahead and enable model tooltips for now. And that does it for the preferences. In the bottom left corner of the screen, you'll notice that I have two video files imported, but neither of them are selected, so nothing is loaded. To load a video file, just go ahead and click on it, and you'll see that it appears in the preview window. As you can see, you can have multiple video files loaded, and to toggle between which one you wanna work on, just select it, and it'll be highlighted in blue. And that'll indicate that that is the active document. But we're gonna start with the first video clip. Along the top right of the toolbar, you'll see that there are several options. The first is a zoom dropdown. If you click on it, you'll have various presets as well as a slider. And if you slide to the right, you'll zoom in and sliding to the left will zoom out. And if you wanna fill the preview area with your video, just click on zoom to fit. Next, you'll have a dropdown for our different view modes. These view modes are most effective when using the preview mode, and I'll show you that in a minute. Next is your preset manager dropdown. Video Enhance AI comes with several pre-built presets that you can use. You also have the option to manage your presets and add a new preset on the fly. We have an entirely separate video dedicated to using the preset manager, so we recommend checking that out to learn more about it. Now let's take a look at the tools along the right side of the screen and we'll start with selecting the AI model. Now we have another video specifically focused on using the model picker, so I recommend checking that out. But to summarize, if you're on the suggested tab, you'll be able to specify certain attributes about your video and based on your selections, Video Enhance AI will recommend up to three different models that we think will perform great. So let's take a look at this video as an example. The video quality is low. You can see that the resolution is a very low 640 by 480. And the primary issue with this video is that it suffers from interlacing, as you can see by all the jagged edges. So I'm gonna select interlaced. Next for the video artifact type, I'm gonna select high compression. Now, if I click on the recommended dropdown, I can see three different models that Video Enhance AI is recommending. And if I wanna quickly compare those three models, I can click on the compare button, which will bring me into comparison view. The next thing I'll wanna do is get a preview of each of these models. And to do that, first I'm gonna specify how many frames I want Video Enhance AI to render in the preview. And in this case, I'll keep it at 30. And when I'm ready, I'll click on preview for it to begin generating a preview for each of the three recommended models. And now that the renders are complete, I paused the video so that I can compare each of the models together. And between these three, I really like Dione TV 100% in the top right quadrant. Now that I'm done with my preview, I can click on close to return back to the editing window. 
each of our models has its own unique options and settings. And in some cases, you have the ability to upscale your video resolution. That's under the output size. There's a drop down here, which allows you to specify certain preset resolutions. But I'll keep this at 100% for the purposes of this video. In the event that you do choose to upscale using a different aspect ratio, for example, if I select 4K and then go to change my view to single view, you'll notice that we have a crop box that will show you what areas of the video will be in your output file based on the changed aspect ratio. Currently, we will automatically crop to the center of the frame. Below the output size, you'll have some additional options here. If you want to add grain to add a bit more texture to your video, you can enable it and then specify the amount and the size. But if you don't want any grain, just disable it. Below that, you have the option of the video format for your output. In addition to video formats like MP4 and ProRes MOV, you can also output image sequence files in JPEG, PNG, and TIFF file formats. And then finally, if your source video clip has audio tracks, we will attempt to preserve that if you enable the keep audio toggle on. When you're ready to output your file, just click on the blue start processing button. Now let's begin work on the second video. I'm gonna go ahead and click it, and then I'm gonna change my view to zoom to fit. Now for the purposes of this video, I know what I want to do, so I don't need the model picker. I wanna go ahead and change the frame rate from its native 23.98 frames per second to 60 frames per second. The first thing I'm gonna do is move the playhead to an area of the video that I want to see in my preview. And then I'm gonna go ahead and change from the suggested tab to the all tab. In the all tab, you'll have access to all of the models that you have currently downloaded. And you can manage the models that you have downloaded using the AI model manager. To access that, go to the file menu and select manage AI models. We have an entire video dedicated to the functionality of the model manager, so I recommend checking it out to learn more about how to use it. And so to recap, under the All tab, you'll have access to all of the models that you have downloaded on your computer. If you hover over one of them and you have the Enable Model Tooltips option activated, you'll get a preview of that model. If you hover over it, you can even grab the toolbar in the middle to get a before and after preview. If you don't want these tool tips to pop up, you can click on the Disable Model Tooltips link right over here. And again, if you want to re-enable it, just go to Preferences and turn it back on. So like I mentioned, I want to change the frame rate, and I know that the Kronos AI model is the ideal solution for that. I'm going to keep the slow motion to 100%, which will preserve the original motion of the video clip. But for the out FPS, I'm going to change it from 23.98 to 60. And then I'm gonna click on the blue preview button to generate a 30 frame preview of this model in action. And now we have a side-by-side -side preview with the original clip on the left and the 30 frame preview on the right. There are also other view modes that you can see here. If you click on the view dropdown, there is a split view, which will allow you to take this bar. If you drag it to the right, you'll see more of your original clip. And if you drag it to the left, you'll see more of the processed version. And then there's also a single view, which will show you your entire processed version. When you're done with the preview, just click close to return to the editor. And again, when you're ready to output your video, just click on the start processing button at the bottom right to begin. Lastly, let's take a look at some of the options below the preview area. Directly below it, you have your time bar with a playhead. And if you click on that playhead and move it around, you can select a specific frame to begin your preview process. Below that, you'll be able to specify your start and end frame. You can do that by using the in and out markers over here. So if I click on this, that'll mark it as a start frame. And if I move my playhead and then click on the end time frame, you'll see now that I have an active frame area. If I want to reset my in and out points, I can just click on this icon over here. After that, you'll have buttons to go to the first and last frame in your timeline, as well as the pause and play button. After that, you'll see a box that'll indicate the specific frame that your playhead is on or the time code if you have that option enabled. In this video, you'll remember that I worked on two different clips and I have the option of processing both in one batch queue. To do that, I'll click on the select all button and you'll see that both of these files have checkboxes enabled. 
Now, if I click on the start processing button, Video Enhance AI will automatically process all of the active clips. I can add additional clips to Video Enhance AI by clicking on the import button, and I can get rid of all of the active videos that are in Video Enhance AI by clicking on the clear all button. Finally, at the very bottom on the left, you'll see information about your source clip, including the path and file name, the original resolution, and the frame rate for that video clip. And to the right of that, you'll see the output path and file name along with the output resolution and frame rate. You should now have a much better idea of how to use Video Enhance AI, and I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you very much.